Today's video will be completely different than all my previous videos so far. And it may even not be that directly connected to the smart home, home automation or home assistant. But stick with me, I think that you will see at the end connection and how this may benefit you if you are interested in a future DIY projects, but also if you have kids, teens who are interested in STEM. Today we will be looking at the Grove Beginner Kit and we will be starting in a couple of seconds. The day I discovered Arduino, but later on also the day I discovered ESP Home has completely changed the way I think of home automation, because it opened up completely new market for me. DIY market. But the problem I had was how to start with the Arduino projects. Ok, let's take a step back. If you want to start with Arduino projects and you are into smart home, what you usually go for is ESP8266 module and ESP32 modules. Those two are most popular currently modules on the market. And the next step of course for you is to learn how to use Arduino or how to code with Arduino. I started that way. The next step for me was to go to ESP Home because it allowed me to code fast or code no code, meaning that I can do stuff without coding the code itself. But what if you are interested in Arduino and want to take it step by step, slowly learning on how to work with modules, I2C and other stuff that you will learn with this Grove Beginner Kit. This kit is actually perfect for that. It is a single board with a bunch of modules. We have LED, buzzer, OLED display, button, rotary potentiometer, light sensor, sound sensor, humidity and temperature sensor, air pressure sensor and of course three axis acceleration or gyro, some sort of gyro. The other thing that is great about this kit is that everything is already connected, so if you don't want to, you don't need to break this board down to individual modules, you can use it like this. On the other hand, if you want to break down the module, you can break each individual piece of the module out and use included cables to connect via the jumper cables. The only additional thing that you need is that's included in the kit also, connection with your PC. And since this Seed Studio Grow Beginner Kit is using standard growth modules, you can grow with it. You can buy additional kit, for example Arduino Smart Humidifier Kit, Smart Home Control Kit, Water Usage Monitoring, Hands-Free Dispenser, etc. After you order the kit, the question is what can you do with it or how you can learn. The documentation for the kit that can be found on the Seed Studio Wiki is really awesome. Let me quickly show you the documentation because no, we will not be ending up and working with this documentation. We will use something completely different that I think is awesome and this is not the first time that I've done it with my guest. First it starts with a hardware overview, then you have a list of all the modules. After that we have again a list of all the modules type of the ID interface, is it digital, analog or I2C and also pins and addresses for each of those modules. And if you have been working with Arduino or even ESP Home, you know that this, what is the type of the interface and the pin or address are the most important things to cook something up to Arduino modules. The board itself comes pre-programmed, meaning that it already has some kind of code and then you can play with it by pressing the buttons, etc. But we are not into that, we want to learn programming. And you are really nicely guided on how to install and get everything set up by this manual. How to download, how to install the USB drivers, how to start the Arduino ID, connect your board. And after everything has been set, we start with the lessons. Each lesson covers one of the modules. And since each of the modules is different, you will learn a lot on not just how the modules work, but what are the differences between digital and analog sensors or modules, etc. For example, this one, it's called blinking with LED. It will tell you what the digital signal is, how it looks. It will also tell you what components you will be using, what are the types of the hardware connections and the software code that you need to use. You will learn on how to turn the module or the LED on, 
turn it off and also make it blink. But I will not be going through all those lessons or projects. Let me show you something better and bring in my guest. Grove Beginner Kit for Arduino also has documentation for the CodeCraft graphical programming course. If you have a kid and you want to start with them working in STEM, this is something that's great for both the kid and you as a parent. And believe me, I did also learn a lot of things by helping my young one work with this application. All those lessons that were available for the Arduino IDE are also available here. But the interface and everything is much more easier for kids to handle, because we will be using drag and drop programming instead of writing the code. Each of the lessons has a nice introduction. Yeah, since we are living in Croatia and Croatian is our native language, it was a bit hard for the kid to understand, but I did help with the translation. And it also did help her with her English. As I mentioned, even better than the version for the Arduino, this one gives you insight. It talks about light, how we see it, what are the frequencies, ranges, etc. Then it gives you instruction on what module we will be using. And it also guides you on how to program and what you need to do inside the IDE. But for this one, you will not need installed application, you can use the web interface. Of course, there is a version that you can download and play with it locally, but for this video, we will be using the IDE in a web browser. When you open up the web page, you have to select what hardware will you be using for programming. I will be using this one, Arduino Uno Mega Beginner Kit. Next thing, you have to select Connect. For this to work, you need to download something that's called Device Assistant. Let me download it and quickly finish the installation process. After everything has been installed, click on Connect and select the COM port. I think I need to use COM3. And now let me bring my today's guest. Let me introduce you to my today's guest. Her name is Zita. Hi, I'm Zita. Okay, so what we will do? We will go through a couple of lessons. Let's start. We have here the user interface. It has commands that we will be using later on. But for the start, let's go back to the documentation. Step one is overview of the CodeCraft programming interface. As you can see, it's very easy to work. We select start, then we just drag the component from the start or this element and drop it in the work area. Procedure for lighting the LED. We select LED, which is on a pin two. And remember that previously there was a list where we could see where all the devices are located, what each of the pins for those devices is. Then we upload the sketch to the group kit, and then we can see the result on the board. So let's start with the first one. It tells us to add setup and a loop block. Then we need to add LED pin with the state, this one here, LED pin with the state on. So Zeta will press on the start, pull this module, and drag it on the workspace. Next, we have to go to Groove Digital. This is that pink one on the left side. Select LED pin to state, a little bit up, up, and drag it to set up. Change the D2 to D4 with the drop down list. And that's it. The next step is to go to Upload and press OK. And after it has finished uploading, as you can see, the LED is now on on this groove board. But the lesson is still not over. We have uploaded, the LED is now on, but let's make it blink or switch between on and off, because currently it is always in the on state. For this, we need to add one more time the same line, D4 and off. Can you do it? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Don't forget to press upload. After the sketch is uploaded, the LED will be off. Let's see what the next step is. So we have to add delay. How will the code then look? 
we will have turn on the LED, delay of 1000 milliseconds, it will then turn it off, and then once again, delay of 1000 milliseconds. 1000 milliseconds is uh, one second. I guess. She already knows that control category has this color, and she knows what she has to do. Drag it in between those two blocks, and one more. As you may have seen, it blinked. It blinked two times because it reset itself, so first time it blinked as it finished, and the second time because it was executing the code. Okay, but we now have just one blink. I guess in the next step we'll be creating a loop. Let's check the documentation. So yes, we will not be using setup anymore, instead we will be using loop. So Zeta will move all of this code from setup to loop. And the LED is blinking now. You see it? Yes. And to help you even further understand what's going on, it also tells you to try different values. So, for example, you can shorten this value or extend this value or vice versa and have different blinking effects. One would be a longer, darker period or light off. The other one would be, for example, shorter LED on period. So, as you can see, it's really awesome tool to not only allow you to play with the code because it visually tells you what the code is doing, but it's also awesome for kids because, yeah, they just drag and drop. But let me look under the hood. I said that this is not only for the kids, this is also for the grown-ups. If you write code like this, it's awesome because you didn't really write it, you just dragged it and dropped it. But what if you want to learn how the real code looks? Just Toggle it here and it will tell you void loop digital write to pin 4 high, delay digital write to pin 4 low. And that's it. This is the code that you would normally do or write in Arduino IDE to get the same thing done. That way, if your kids want to start, they can start with the drag and drop code and later on work their way towards the Arduino IDE. But also, as I said, it may be easier for you to start with the drag and drop code and then look under the hood what is the code that is doing the same thing, which I think is really awesome, isn't it? Yes. Lesson two, and each lesson is building up on the previous lesson. The LED is shining brightly. In fact, it's so bright your eyes may hurt. I myself also need sometimes to get reminded of the differences and understand maybe better how this all works. So this is a nice and easy way to understand and show you how things are done. And now we will be working with PWM. Pulse width modulation is used in tons of stuff. For example, one of the most frequent things that I use myself that uses PWM is my 3D printer. It is using PWM to heat up the bed. It is using 220 volts with, uh, I think, 350 or 400 watt heater but it doesn't provide constant current or maximum power. Instead, it goes from zero to up to 60%. And by this modulation, meaning that there is voltage, there is no voltage, it is able to achieve the temperature that I need. When the temperature is achieved, the bigger is the break between the pulses, meaning that less power is used, and meaning that the temperature is not uh, increasing anymore, but it is maintained. Same thing can be used for the light. If we lower the PWM values, we will not get that bright light. We'll start with the start block. And the value will be 255. The next thing I have to do is connect this cable. Because we are now using an out port with the D3. And as you can see, the brightness of the light is at 100%, or 255, which 255 is 100%.
Next, try and change the value 255 to 122. And the light is now much dimmer. The last thing we will do is create this one. We will create one, two, three, four, five, six analog writes with the delays between each one of them. It will go from 255 up to zero. That means that the light will slowly dim. Okay, we now have six. In the first PWM value, write 255. And as you can see, the light just gets slowly dimmer and dimmer. When it ends, it goes back to 100% and then once again, it's dimmer and dimmer. So, hope you had a great time, Zita. Yes, I had. Give me five. Let's slowly wrap up the video. Thank you, Zita, for all of your help. For whom is this kit? It is actually for everybody. The kit can be used as a STEM project or STEM education tool. For kids that are in a school, it can be used for teens to slowly convert them from the drag and drop code to the Arduino code. But it can also help you work along and understand the principles of how are the components working. The kit itself really has everything that you will need to start and later on work on your own Arduino projects and add them to the Home Assistant. Unfortunately, this board doesn't have Wi-Fi capabilities. And also there is no embedded MQTT connection. If it would have those two, it would be the best way for prototyping your own projects. As I mentioned, you can add additional modules that are Groove compatible. Seed Studio has a lot of different type of the boards, groove modules, etc. that can help you not with just STEM products, but also the projects for your home assistant and home automation. I myself am using a couple of Seed Studio boards inside my 3D printer, because they are controlling the ERCF or Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder, multi-material unit. The documentation in this kit, no matter if you are going for the Arduino IDE or this web interface for drag and drop coding, is awesome. And this is how all the documentation should look. Explaining you why is something going on, then showing you how you can replicate that so you understand the whole process. Not just telling you, just write that piece of code there. And this is it for this not Home Assistant How To With Virgil Tinker. I really do hope that you did enjoy this video and that you did find it useful. If you did like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up because it not just means a lot to me and also to Zita, my special guest now, but it also helps with the YouTube algorithms. If you still haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified on the future video updates and of course the streams. If you have any kind of a comment or a question in regard to this video or any previous video I did or have a wish for some future video, you can always leave comment down in the comment section below or also go to the Discord server and leave your comment there. And before I end up this video, I really would like to thank everybody who is supporting me and has become a YouTube channel member. Thank you all for all of your support. And also thanks to each and every one of you who has watched, liked or subscribed to my channel. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member. Thank you all for all of your support and I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.